Following yesterday's epic fail to get into the centre of Lille, we are determined to visit the city of Arras, where we first explore tunnels 20 metres down under the city streets. We then enjoy a great free park up in the city before exploring the local market and experiencing a bit of French life. Welcome to the channel. That's Harry, our camper van, and that's me, Jane, and here's Stu. And we love to share with you our van life adventures. I had a little visitor last night. We're just getting our regular morning top-up of daily food and I have to say, just buying what we need for the next 24 hours is working out really well. Especially as the fridge isn't overloaded and we're not scratching around trying to find things. Oh, and the memory of those last macarons in the last episode may need to be reenacted. on the road and unusually we've booked onto a tour which is not something that we do a lot of. And today we're at the Carrier Wellington Tunnel Museum that we've heard great things about. And as usual, here's a surprise, we're early. So that means there's time for Stu to reduce the breeze stock. To see these pictures of the heroes of the tunnels is quite something for us as we both have a great interest in old black and white photographs. We really love the quality of these models depicting scenes from the tunnelling. I didn't have the heart to tell Stu he had his helmet on backwards. Well, not until I had ridiculed him enough, of course. The tour begins by making your way to the lift, where as a soldier you walk through the burning streets of Arras. Twenty metres down in what was old chalk mines in medieval times where they extracted stones for the buildings is a complex set of quarries. Very well done. Uh, these things are all really yeah. well done yeah. uh, and this is no exception. The tour guide was excellent and you knew stuff, young lad. Uh, I mean, they get you into the th theme of it straight away because the safety helmets are, are, are tin hats. When you've got them uh, on the when, right when way. When you've got them on the right way, not like <laughs> they put them on the wrong way. That's looking at it easiest. Um, but then they, he just they, he takes you around the whole history of sort of the background to the war, why they're there, what the uh, Arras front was. Um, but the digital experience, when you go down 20 metres... Uh, underground is was great, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just it atmospheric, was. I think. And the guide, along with the audio visuals, bring to life the events leading up to the battle and all the work that the miners had to do. For 443,000 of men died during the Battle of the Somme. The First World War then fell into a stalemate after the failure of the offensive at the Somme. A new plan was formulated by the Allied generals to break the deadlock and surprise the German lines. War underground then became a tactical element of digging under opposing trenches to either set explosives or be a route to advance troops. The Allies, as part of an offensive, decided in Arras to tunnel under the Germans using existing underground quarries and the work in this area fell to recruiting mining specialists from New Zealand. In six months they had dug nearly 10 kilometres of tunnels and converted quarries into billets for soldiers to launch their attack from. Yeah, what's really moving about it is you, you're right there where they were, really, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, and I think because it's projected onto the walls, I think it makes you even feel you're sort of walking yeah. in their footsteps a bit um you know when you're going down the tunnels and that you're walking where they used where thousands and thousands of men a um, went out on the one yeah. once they broke through but also all the all the tunnelers which were mainly from new zealand in in the uh, in that area we are 20 meters underground and this is an extraction shaft dated from the middle ages because during the middle ages the quarrymen go down here with ropes and pulleys and take blocks of chalk and they extract the chalk outside 
to build the different buildings in the city. Yeah, because there was the uh, original tunnels were actually from when they built Arras in the medieval times because they were quarrying to get the stone out for the uh, buildings. To the chalk. And um, what they didn't know, they didn't know the tunnels were there. So when they were down there and they, they decided they were going to tunnel uh, because that's what they wanted to do for the offensive, um, the New Zealanders, they suddenly came across the tunnels and realised there was this complex of, yeah. tun of, of, of mine works that already existed. So they sort of used those and into and connected those for, for that. And obviously that was uh, obviously to their advantage in that. And they give names to the different quarries too. We are in the Wellington Quarry, and Wellington, this is the name of the capital of New Zealand. On the wall, you can read Nelson and Blenheim. Nelson and Blenheim, this is the name of two cities in New Zealand too. Everyone was focused on the 9th of April 1917, when the attack was to take place. So six months of tunnelling lay ahead for the New Zealand sappers. We are in an underground city and the British soldiers need to eat or drink, for example. The, bottle, the bottles here are original. They dated from the First World War. Maybe can you recognize the bottle here? This is a Perrier bottle. You can see HP sauce too. Eventually, you're led to a spot where they broke out of the tunnels into the German lines. And unfortunately, many, many of them died as they exited the tunnels of what was yet another brutal battle. It was nine, I think it was nine and a half years for a, a, an English guided tour. Definitely advise you book online because we got there um, and there was a guy came in, English guy came in, he wasn't allowed on the tour because they were full. Yeah, definitely, because Stu's always saying, shall we book? I'm like, no, no, we'll just turn up and we did book. And yeah, it was the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah, there was. There was it a was... bloke that couldn't get on the tour. Um, really? Yeah, and they make it really atmospheric because they... Um, you know, they do all the shadows and the noises yeah. of all the voices. Yeah. And I think they got a Scottish bloke that um, basically goes through what what it was like for him to go yeah. through it. And he went through it with his friend and his friend basically just got shot, shot straight through the head. As he went straight up through the tunnel, which uh, many, many yeah. of them did. Many of them went up the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, didn't come back because the, the push didn't work as, as most of the World War I pushes out the trench yeah. didn't work. And this is the beauty about traveling isn't it it's just learning when you when you're actually in the place it's a lot different isn't it than we have time to learn as well sometimes yeah. you don't have time to learn yeah. i think we, we're in a you've know, got a pace to be able to time to actually take older. things in and that you know I mean, history only becomes more important as you get older doesn't yeah. it don't you think um yeah i think so i think I you think appreciate it, it more i think that comes comes with age you don't don't appreciate history but well I you think haven't got important. a concept a great concept of time no. i'm convinced it's because you haven't got a great concept of time yeah. when you're like 15 it's you know and when you get to Stu's age it becomes quite important <laughs> thanks you're welcome you make it sound as though you're any younger <laughs> which you're not 20 years younger not no. And we're just parked at the back of the Citadel. Is Citadel, it? yeah, there's a um, park for night place. We're still in the. Should, look as if we shouldn't be here. <laughs> should we be here? There is another uh, couple yeah. of. Uh, well, a van. Uh, and so, a... hopefully. Please help us by giving this video a like now. And to see more, click that subscribe button. It's free and it really encourages us to continue. We take a short walk around the Citadel which was built as a military fortification in the 17th century, instructed by Louis XIV. And it was capable of housing up to 1,500 soldiers. 
This is the oldest church in the city and is dedicated to St Louis. Built in 1673 and it was later restored by Napoleon III. And it has a spectacular roof inside that was sometimes used to house military goods and acted as an armoury. Missed the first two. It was incredibly preserved despite the First and Second World Wars going on around it. It's built in the shape of a pentagon formed by five ramparts and the fortification was never besieged. And as we walked around the fortifications perimeter back to Harry, we came across this well-kept, impressive memorial and cemetery. The cemetery contains over 2,650 Commonwealth burials of soldiers that fought in the Battle of Arras in the First World War. I must say, the way they've all been maintained and all the beautiful flowers, is so much work's gone into them. The Arras Memorial commemorates approximately 35,000 servicemen from the United Kingdom, South Africa and New Zealand who died in the Arras sector between the spring of 1916 and the 7th of August 1918 and have no known grave. And there's always a registration book that allows you to see lists of all the names. and we're starting to think that we're going to be in for some good weather as the temperature is rising. And it's time to wash my hair and it was all going so well, but then... We just had a disaster. It was all going so well. That'd be good for your shoulder. That's your next operation. And then as Stu picked the bucket up, it went flooding into the van, the whole bucket. I'm just trying to get it all out now. The good news is the floor's really clean there. Simple tea, just going to do a salad with a salad dressing of just a tablespoon full of olive oil, uh, salt, pepper, lemon rind, lemon juice, a good slug of lemon juice, half a lemon juice, and that's just all mixed together with tomatoes, lettuce cucumber, peppers, whatever you like. And then we bought some chicken. We've got the chicken, a bit expensive moment, so we need to see if we can find a, have a look in the butchers, but that was just ready cooked chicken, so it'll be easier. And then we bought some pasta, and a pasta sauce, just to go in it. Simple tea. I'll probably have some bread, as usual. That's all right, isn't it? I have to say. Yep. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Was that half a jar? That's half a jar. And as the heat's rising, we're starting to get a few flies and midges. And we desperately need a good airflow. So it's time to test Stu's new midge nets. And I have to say, they do a really good job. Come here. <laughs> The following morning we're on the move early, which is really unusual for us as we want to explore the centre of Arras. Harry the sat nav keeps trying turn to turn left now and then turn left. It's trying to take us take right. down one way streets the wrong way. Okay. Turn right now and then turn left. Turn right here. What does that say? 
Turn left now and then turn left. Good old Barry's sat nav. We need to use Google Maps. Hold on, there's a lady. This is where the sat nav and localised diversions do not mix, so we go with our nose. And we're determined to find a park up today and we won't be put off. Let's just go wherever he's going. <laughs> if he's going home, we'll go with him. Make a sharp left turn now and then turn right. Stressful. Oh, that was the other one I was trying to get. Oh, there's a camper van. Yeah, I know. Um, Can you put Harry's window um, side mirrors in? Nah, yeah, but it's high up, isn't it? Well, they just block roads. <laughs> And Ari's, so when we go out, I want to get your, where we're going to on your Google. And we're in luck as today the regular local market fills the whole of the large Heroes Square. <laughs> What is it? I don't know. So Jane's buying uh, some fresh pasta. So we're just trying to struggle because we want to get the meat filled pasta. She's trying to do the Google Translate on that. So it's obviously just a local Saturday market, the streets are all blocked off. Produce is just fantastic. It's even live produce. <laughs> so Jane managed to do Google Translate and get us pork and beef. I think it was quite expensive, so whether he, he did us a bit, it was uh, 12 euro. The architecture is a beautiful backdrop of what we visualise of a typical French market. So we're in what they call Hero Square at the moment. The buildings are fantastic. This is the adjacent Grand Place Square and it amazes us after two world wars how the city can be rebuilt and is resilient to conflict as can be seen in these photographs. Well that was a really enjoyable and a great way to spend a few hours in the sun. Well it's time for sun lunch. So we make a quick stop in the supermarket. And the first thing I do is I've got to go out again because there's no baskets and then I try to get out and the alarm went off. And I go for round two, but this time with my trolley. And today we want to have lunch with a view and also have a small walk. Well, we'll leave this video here. But in the next episode, we'll share with you a location that blew us away with a combination of beauty and history.